A beverage on ground antenna is an excellent complement to the 43 foot vertical ground mounted antenna and a bog or beverage on ground is a compact alternative to the full size beverage uh, and therefore it fits on my suburban property. Having the beverage antenna on the ground lowers the velocity factor of the wire and uh, which makes it electrically longer. Therefore, more wavelengths or fractions of wavelengths can fit within a given physical length of wire. And this is why a beverage on ground is much shorter than a beverage above ground. Um, by adding a beverage on ground to my existing setup, I significantly enhanced my ability to hear weak signals without any visual changes to the property. A short bog performs very well. Uh, out, also, it is reversible. So with just two elements, I can have directivity toward Europe, or South America, or Australia, or East Asia. Hello, I'm Marcus N5ZY, and I live in an HOA like many other amateur radio operators. And I love HF, but I cannot install a 40-foot tower and a high directional gain antenna. I have to be stealthy, I have to be neighborly, and likewise, I do not have an amplifier. Fortunately, my yard is larger than most HOA properties, so I have that in my favor. I have essentially have a double lot. If you haven't observed from my blog pages, my blog, by the way, is n5zy.org, n5zy.org, you'll, you'll notice that I, observe, I enjoy engineering and fabrication. I like the challenge to attempt new amateur radio activities. I like to solve puzzles that provide great opportunities to learn and to have hands-on learning. Uh, a few brief points about my vertical antenna that I have in the backyard that I'm using this bog antenna with. All right. uh, I worked with my adjacent neighbors in the HOA to seek approval of the 43-foot vertical, and it's also on a tilt-over base plate. So I promised to my neighbors that and the HOA that I would not have it upright all the time. I would only have it upright when I'm actively using it. And being on the tilt over base, I go out and loosen two bolts, I lay it down or I stand it up and lock it in place. Um, it's also, it doesn't have guy wires. It's self-supporting up to a certain amount of wind, which we have a lot of wind in Oklahoma. Uh, I think anytime it gets above 35 miles an hour, I go out and take it down. It's rated for higher than that, but I don't want to find out. Also, it's not observable from the street or the front yard, so but from the sides, where it is observable, it's difficult to see because it tapers every three feet. Uh, it starts at the base at two and one eighth of an inch tube, aluminum tube, and it, as it goes up to the top, at the very top, it is three eighths of an inch. Um, <clears throat> additionally, I apply a gray paint to it. I cover up that brilliantly shiny aluminum, and I reapply that paint every couple of years, and it's spray paint. Uh, to use it effectively, I implemented a remote tuner. <clears throat> it's much more efficient to have a remote tuner if you can do it. For a 43-foot vertical, I strongly recommend it. Um, it's uh, I, I wouldn't do a vertical without a remote tuner. I mean, you get better results if your tuner is out at the antenna. Uh, and right at the base of it. So literally my coax from my shack goes underground out to the tuner, goes into the tuner, and then from the tuner it directly connects via 12 gauge wire to the antenna. Uh, initially I had an LDG remote tuner which worked really well um, except on 160 and 80 meters it just didn't have the capacity to match the impedance mismatch and um, <clears throat> so what I ended up doing after a few years of that was uh, I purchased an MFJ tuner that can, there's like one model from MFJ that is, that's a remote tuner that can accommodate a mismatch of nine to one. And I implemented that and it's, it can tune the antenna and it seems to work well. Um, also every few years, as spring begins, I go out and plant new radials. <laughs> uh, so I mow the lawn real short, lay new radial wires out, and I use those fabric 
fabric. Um, I use those garden fabric staples. They're about that long. Uh, you get like 500 of them for, I don't know, they're cheap. They're real cheap. Um, and I put one, I put one of those staples about every foot and a half, two feet. It just kind of depends uh, to hold the wire down. And then after I've mowed the yard, generally by the third time I've mowed the yard, you cannot see those radials anymore. So within three weeks, they're, they're buried underneath the mulch and um, you'll never see them again unless you go out and start digging through the yard, you'll see them dig through them. The vertical antenna and the remote tuner is practical for my location and my HOA restrictions. And it does well for transmitting and has been good for receiving with, within the expectations. You know, and the expectation is that a, a 43 foot receive antenna is not going to work well for 160 meters. It's just electrically way too short. It will pick up really strong signals, but um, it's, it's just not long enough. Same thing for 80. It's just drastically short for 80. Um, and that's why I wanted an antenna uh, for receiving on those bands that was as long as I could possibly get. And the beverage on ground is what allowed me to do that. Um, my beverage on ground is 120 feet. However, it excels at receiving on 40, 30, 20. Uh, the performance on 160 and 80 meters is likely good, but I haven't had the opportunity uh, to verify that during the peak of the solar cycle. And I'm also here in the middle of the continent, North American continent. I'm in Oklahoma. So by the time the you know 160 or 80 meters opens up here, it's closed in Europe or in East Asia. Um, so there's, during the peak of the solar cycle, I just really can't do any DX on those two bands just yet. So if, if you can run 150 or 200 feet of wire, you'll have very good performance with the beverage on ground, even on 160 meters. Uh, even though one wavelength for 160 meters is about 550 feet, a bog that's about 200 feet will be really good. Um, 250 feet will be very good, okay? And that's, again, because the uh, the electrical length of that wire is longer since it's laying on the ground because the velocity factor being on the ground or adjacent to ground. The bog increases the signal to noise ratio by reducing noise. So on the longer wavelength bands where the atmospheric noise is significant, the bog will be very helpful. Um, um, on like 40 meters and up, you may need a preamp uh, because the, the signal coming in off of that, the voltage is going to be fairly low, very low. Um, so you might need a preamp. The bog is directional, which is something new for me in my urban lot. Unlike my omnidirectional vertical, the bog helps me to receive signals from Western and Central Europe and South America and Australia and Eastern Asia. Uh, the bog works particularly well on 40 meters where the atmospheric noise is significant. Again, at the peak of the solar cycle, though, uh, I've not been able to receive much DX on 80 and 160 meters. Okay, so here's the layout of the yard, and this is the back fence, and the bog, the element for bog one runs along the bottom row of that fence, and then this would be the side fence, bog two, or element two, runs along the bottom of that fence, and when bog one is forward, it's pointing at 60 degrees, when it's reversed, it's pointing 240 degrees, and likewise, bog, one, bog two forward is 130 and reverse is 310 degrees. And I have these wired up so that I can go around the compass rows using my little switch here. So there's one and then two. So I went from here to here and then three. So now I'm pointing over here and four. 
So now I'm pointing that way, of course. And then over here on the 7610, I have, uh, I'm on antenna one, which is, is the 43 foot vertical. And the bias T for that's way back there. So you can see on here it says antenna one stroke R. The R means it's using antenna one, but for the receive, it's using the receive antenna. And this radio, the 7610, only has one receive antenna input. So, uh, but it has uh, two HF outputs or, and inputs. But for receive dedicated, it only has one. So I can hold this in, and now it's just using antenna one for transmit and receive. If I hold it in again, now it's using antenna one with the receive antenna for the receive. All right, so here you can see the 43 foot vertical going way up in the sky. I'll take you over here first. Here is where I have the control wire and the coax coming out of the attic, going into the ground, and over here to a terminator for one of the antenna elements. So I have a ground rod and a terminator, and again, this is reversible. So the wire that you see coming into the terminator is the actual antenna element. And then there's an earth ground, and then uh, that runs along the bottom of the fence. All the way down to the other end of the yard, where the other receiver is located. This wire coming up from the top of the fence, going all the way down, is the wire that comes into the ICOM receiver and the control wire. Okay, and this is the back side. This is where the uh, feed units are that feed the antennas. And uh, the central switch, which switches from antenna, well, from bog one to bog two and forward and reverse. Um, and then here's two terminators. So there's a terminator on the back side there. And Terminator back here on the back side, right there. And then earth ground right down there. Yep. Um, so here you can see the antenna, bog two antenna is coming in on the bottom of the fence, goes up into the uh, that flex four feed unit. The other side of that feed unit goes to a terminator. And then this feed unit has a terminator on one side and the antenna on the other side. Uh, and that's this antenna wire here. It runs along this side of the fence all the way down. Way down there to the other end of the yard. Again, that's the control wires coming in from above. Well, it's the wire that goes to the ICOM radio and the control of the wire from the full port switch. It goes into that unit right there. And that's pretty much all there is to see. That's it, there's the 43 foot vertical. As you can see, it tapers down as it increases in height and it's self supporting. Although, I'll take it down as the wind gets much worse. Here on the bottom half, you can see where I didn't paint it, and then you can see the rest where I obviously have painted it. And you can also see the MFJ tuner has mounted the remote tuner. 
that's it.